Hello, Trekkies. Welcome back to another episode of Yelling About Star Trek. My name is Chris Fox, and this is the show where I yell at you about all things Star Trek for your amusement, so I'm not yelling at my friends and family who really don't want to hear my thoughts and theories on this fantastic franchise. Today, I want to talk about DS9 and one of the things that I actually think is DS9's greatest achievement, and that is one Mr. DeMar. Well, not Mr. DeMar. I don't actually don't think he has a first name. So just DeMar. And you might be going, wait, DeMar? You mean that random background guy who was Galdicott's yes guy? And that guy that sort of became an alcoholic partway through the series? Yeah, that guy. That's who I'm talking about. I think that DeMar has the best character arc in all of Star Trek, maybe even TV. Now, I haven't seen every single TV show out there, but I've seen a lot. And to be honest, nothing has come quite that close. But before we get into the usual rigmarole of the episode, I do want to share one big important update. And that is, this past Saturday, as a co-host on The Scotch Trekker, I had a chance to interview Melinda Snodgrass. And yes, it is the Melinda Snodgrass who wrote TNG's The Measure of a Man, which is considered to be by many one of TNG's finest achievements. And... Not only that, but she also was a story editor on TNG for season two and season three. So this really was a dream come true. If you want to see the interview, look up the Scotch Trekker on YouTube. And also join us every Saturday where we air a live stream at 10 a.m. and 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And in the show, we interview cool people, sometimes super fans who are really into Trek, and also sometimes people who have actually worked on Trek. So if you're into Star Trek, which I assume you are because you're listening to this podcast, then absolutely check it out. And as usual, get out of your space pajamas, put on your shiniest pair of boots, get a cup of coffee, get a cup of tea, maybe some iced tea if you want to pull the archer maneuver, and brace for impact because things are going to get nerdy. Damar. Let's talk about Damar, okay? There's a lot that can be said about him, but one of the things that I don't think people have really talked about is just how fantastic his character arc is. And as I said at the top of this episode, I think his character arc is the best character arc that we have ever seen in Star Trek and maybe even all of television. Again, haven't seen every single television series out there, but oh goodness gracious, I have seen a lot, whether it be police procedurals, sitcoms, medical dramas, police dramas, fire station dramas, all kinds of dramas, including Stargate, which is science fiction, and just a whole other slew of shows that I can't even think of. All the CW shows, which I love, by the way. I know they get a lot of hate, but I really do enjoy them. But even when looking at all of those shows, I don't think there has been any character arc that has even come close to the greatness of Damar. But I can assure you, Damar has the best character arc in Star Trek. And I am going to explain why right now. The first thing we have to talk about in this larger discussion is what actually makes a character arc great. And to me, the answer is very simple. All that is really required for a character arc, in my mind, to be great is when a character starts off one way and then becomes something new by the end of the series or the episode or whatever the character is introduced in. There has to be an arc where you see they start off in one place and then end up somewhere completely different. And that's probably the most basic thing, but I think it's what truly makes it fantastic when it's done right. But what's important is that these changes seem logical and don't seem to be just random made up. Like, oh, our hero, by the way, is now all of a sudden a murderer. And okay, where did that come from? And we just added that because it makes everything cool. So those kinds of changes aren't great. But when they happen and they seem logical, they can really be fantastic. So that's the main thing that makes the character arc great in my mind. But where Damar stands out in my mind is the fact that when you're introduced to Damar, you don't see any of it coming. 
But it's still logical. So when these changes do happen, they make sense. They're woven into the story in a logical way that makes you understand where it's going. But when you first meet him, you don't have any clue of where Damar is going to end up. So now that we have that understanding, let's talk about where he started and where he ends up. Damar himself is introduced midway through the series, and his first on-screen appearance is just a random first officer guy that happens to be working with Gal Dukat, and Damar really isn't given that many lines. He has lines like, yes, sir, and all the usual like background actor lines like, oh, yes, sir, preparing to fire, ooh, I'm saying space things, and oh, I'm carrying out this guy's orders. He's, he's like a first officer, but a first officer with very minimal dialogue. And then at the end of season five, when Gal Dukat and the rest of the Dominion try to take over the station, Damar is there, and he has dialogue. And you're like, okay, this guy's becoming a bit of a character. And then th- they do take over the station. I don't know why I said try to, because they do it very easily, and there's really no problem doing it. They, they do suffer some losses, but uh, but they win, as you would expect, because, well, they're the bad guys and they're the Dominion, and we need to make cool stuff happen to progress the plot. So they win, they take over the station, everything's hunky-dory for them, and everything's kind of horrible for the main characters, but again, not the point of this podcast. And then we come back in season six, and our heroes are so miserable. Kira's walking around the station looking miserable with the fact that she has to serve with all the Cardassians and the Dominion folks. And Sisko's off in a start base, being miserable that he's not on DS9. He's worried about Jake and just all this stuff is going on. Nobody's happy except for their Cardassians and their Dominion allies. And of course, we get to see Ducat and we get to see Ducat walking around super proud just like oh yeah it's so great man it's so good to be back here's my old chair and oh Kira's here too it's gonna be like old times it's gonna be fantastic this is gonna be so cool yeah this is this is great and along with Gal Ducat is Dumar and Dumar is there he has dialogue he is giving Kira a hard time. He's lording around the station just like the Gaul. And he's doing all the things. And you're like, oh, God, I just want to punch that man in the face. Why can't he go die? And just, he's brutal. And you're like, oh, geez, Louise, just Damar and Ducat and Wayun, just get off the station for once, okay? And just sh- shut up. And that continues for the next few episodes on the station where... The Dominion's there, Galdukat's there, Wayun, Damar, they're doing their thing, they're walking around, they're lording over everyone, and Kira's miserable, and so that happens, and you don't think really anything about Damar beyond, man, I just want to punch him in his smarmy face and just get rid of the man. And eventually Starfleet is able to retake the station, but during all the chaos, the Dominion troops are trying to evacuate, and Dukat's running around trying to find Zial. Eventually he finds her, but then Zial's like, no, no, I don't want to go, I want to stay, and Dukat doesn't know what to do, and then Damar's like, oh, I should kill her, because if I kill her, then Dukat will agree to come with the rest of us, so he kills her. And as the viewer, we're kind of shocked, because, whoa, where did that come from, like, Aren't you super loyal to Dukat? Like, you shouldn't kill his daughter. That's a little bit weird. And so we're seeing two things. That one, he's a murderer. And number two, he is willing to defy Dukat when he thinks it's necessary. So he's not just a yes man through and through. And those things are great because, again, you're seeing this smarmy guy who you just want to punch in the face. And you don't think that he has any redeemable qualities. And, and that makes sense. It's fine. And that's what you'd expect in Star Trek. And that's what you'd expect in most shows that, okay, the bad guys don't necessarily have redeemable qualities. And these aren't people that you're going to be rooting for. So there's no way ever that you're ever going to root for Damar. But then we start to root for Damar by the end of the series. But of course, it doesn't happen overnight. There is a slow progression. So when Damar and the rest of the gang get back to Cardassia, not including Dukat, because... He went a little bit crazy and was captured by the Federation and yada, 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 you know, the whole Dukat, so I don't need to get into that. But the point is, when Damar gets back to Cardassia, he's still lording around. He's kind of excited that, well, now that Dukat's out of the way, which he's still upset about. But he's like, hey, it's fine. I am now taking over Dukat's position, and I am now the leader of Cardassia, and it 
feels fantastic. But then we start to see there's some changes going on progressively throughout the rest of season six and going into season seven. Dumar starts to butt heads with Wayun because Wayun's there all the time and he's kind of interfering with things and not giving Dumar the respect he deserves. He's mistreating Cardassia. And what we see at the beginning of all of this is that Dumar has become an alcoholic and is drinking Canar all the time. He's getting wasted at three in the afternoon because he's miserable about what's going on. And we start to feel a little bit sorry for the guy. Like, yeah, we're not rooting for him. And yeah, he's not a good guy. But still, he's going through a lot. And, you know, he's clearly suffering. But I'm not going to lose any sleepover because you're a bad guy and you work for the Dominion. And then later in Season 7, there's that great episode where Worf and Desiree have been captured by the Cardassians and are on Cardassian the headquarters and they're doing all the stuff. They're trying to get out. And then Wayun makes one too many smarmy comments that Worf is not impressed with. And Worf being Worf just reacts by... <laughs> and I shouldn't laugh because this is technically murder. But he reacts by grabbing Wayun, breaking his neck and killing him. It's a moment where you're like, okay, that's kind of awesome. But then you're like, ooh, goodness gracious me. What is Damar going to do? And Damar comes over, Kanar in hand and starts laughing and you're like what wait that's his boss he's laughing about this that can't be good but okay maybe he's just happy to see him dead well he's still obviously he's still obviously going to be a jerk towards Worf and Esri right but no he doesn't do that he actually helps Worf and Esri escape and then we see that that moment has given Damar a little bit more confident to the point where Wayun 7 even notices that Damar's changed and is a little bit skeptical of what's going on, but doesn't think that Damar is going to do anything to hurt him. And for the most part, we think, yeah, Wayun's right. Damar's a little bit more confident, but he's not going to do anything. But then we start to see that he's slowly changing and he's trying to meet up with some other Cardassians who are loyal to him. And then we find out later that, oh, he actually is trying to set up a resistance. He's becoming a resistance fighter. But then in the final stretch of the series, Damar becomes a resistance fighter and even calls out to Kira and says, hey, Kira, can you help us out? My men and I don't have any idea what to do. You know, you beat us in the occupation. Can you show us some tips, please? And Kira is not having it, but she agrees and she goes to one of Damar's hideouts and hangs out with Damar and his men. And there's a great scene where Damar learns that his wife and family have been executed, even though that they're not resistance fighters themselves, and he didn't even tell them about it. And the Dominion apparently knew that they had nothing to do with it, but they killed them anyways. And then Kira makes a comment like, yeah, Damar, what kind of people would do that? And she's like, oh, I shouldn't have said that. And basically, she's referencing the fact that Cardassians did the same thing to her people and would kill Bajorans that weren't even part of the resistance because, well, they wanted them to stop. And Garrick points out that, hey, Damar is now learning the true cost of what he did. And in that moment, we see that Damar is fully realizing what he and his people did during the occupation and is seeing the price of becoming a full-on resistance fighter. And we as the audience are like, oh, we actually kind of feel bad for him. And, you know, we actually kind of like Damar at this point. And earlier in the episode, I believe it was earlier in the episode, all the episodes in the final stretch kind of blur together because they're all one continuous, I think, seven-parter. So it's hard to keep together in my mind when things, when certain things happen, but they all kind of blend together. But during one of those episodes when Kira and Garrick and Odo are helping out Damar and his gang on how to be resistance fighters, Damar actually ends up killing his most loyal officer, 
because his most loyal officer was going to kill Kira, which would have thrown off the entire plan and just caused more problems. So you see that change where it's like, oh, wow, he's actually willing to kill one of his own people for the betterment of the Alpha Quadrant. Like, that's huge. Like, that's not the Damar that we saw at the beginning of the series. And he not only inspires his own fellow officers to join his resistance, which they already did because that's already been established, but he inspires civilians to rise up against the Dominion to the point where he actually dies and becomes a hero. And people are like, oh my gosh, Dumar died. We have to go get the Dominion now. There is we got to do this. Like we have to fight for our rights because DeMar did that. And now we're doing it too. And he becomes a legend. I mean, even Garrick's housekeeper, former housekeeper has the line where she's like, Oh wow. They're just talking about you, DeMar. Everybody's so excited. and Everybody's so hyped about what you're doing. They're like, I saw DeMar here. I saw DeMar on that planet. DeMar's not really dead. And you really get the sense that, wow, Almost every Cardassian who doesn't support the Dominion, which at this point are most of the civilians, are just so hyped about Damar and truly believe that he is a savior. And as I said, when he dies, he becomes even more of a savior and becomes a hero. And Kira has a moment where she is really sad about that and says, all right, everybody, we, we got to move on. We can't let Damar die in vain. And... She does what she does. Odo does his thing. Cisco and the rest of the gang are doing their thing in space. Day is saved. War is over. Everybody's happy except for, well, Cardassia has just been decimated and they have no idea how they're going to rebuild. But again, not the point of this podcast. But we're left thinking of Damar as a hero, as someone who really was willing to give his life for his people and not just for his people, but for everyone in the Alpha Quadrant who was being subjugated by the Dominion, which is, I I believe at this point, is almost everybody because, well, the Dominion, they're pretty big. But to sum up everything that I just went on about for a very long time, he starts off as a random yes guy who you think, ah, he's going to maybe say fire weapons or whatever dialogue he's going to have. He's not going to do anything. And then he gets reintroduced later and become super smarmy and cocky. And you're like, I just want to go punch the guy in the face. And goodness gracious, Damar, I hope you get your just desserts. And then he becomes an alcoholic, someone who doesn't like what's going on. And you start to feel bad for him, but not really because he's still Damar and he was still a really big jerk to everyone on DS9 when he was in control of it. And then he goes from that to someone who really doesn't like the Dominion and then decides to rise up against them and then becomes a resistance fighter and then dies a hero. And to me, the reason this is so powerful is because you don't see it coming when you're introduced to Damar in the series. He is just meant to be a background guy. And I don't know what went on behind the scenes. I'm not sure if Damar was meant to be a one-off character or why they brought him back. But I, I get the sense that, yeah, he was meant to be just a random guy who was there to spit out some dialogue. And then, you know, then we might call him back if we need another scene with with Galdicott's first officer, but I don't think he was meant to be someone that was reoccurring. So it's a huge thing, the fact that when you are introduced to Damar, you don't anticipate where this is coming. And if someone were to say to, I don't know, someone watching the episode where he's introduced, like, hey, that guy's going to become a war hero. You're like, wait, what? Nah, no way. And then, you're, then when you see him in season six and he's walking around being a jerk to everybody, you're like, no, definitely not a war hero. He is a jerk and a really inappropriate word. You can fill in the blank there. But he's a jerk and ah, just want him to, to go. And so you don't see any of it coming. But everything that's happening and when it happens and how it happens makes sense. It's done so gradually that... You don't really even notice how much it's changing until you stop and think about it. And again, he's not even the main character. He's a secondary character. A guy who was meant to be a one-off thing is now being peppered in throughout the series so that you're spending, you know, a good maybe 10 or 15 minutes with him almost every episode in the later part of the series. 
that every time you see him, there's a little bit more development. It's not a lot. There's a little bit. So by the time you see him in the end, everything that happened made sense. And there are very few characters in TV shows where a character has changed that much and had it make sense. And let's compare some of the other characters that have great character arcs in Star Trek. For example, Seven and Nine, she's one of the best. I think she is maybe the best character in Voyager. That is... Or right on par with the Doctor. I don't know which one's better. Maybe Seven of Nine's a little bit better. It's hard to say. Very close. But Seven of Nine, great character. Amazing arc. But when we're introduced to Seven of Nine in Season 4, we sort of already know where her character arc is going. You know that, okay, she's a former Borg. And throughout the series, she's going to rediscover her humanity. And she's going to become a more sociable person, and maybe even develop a romantic relationship. That's something that we expect. And it happens. It happens very well. Not taking anything away from it because it's done very well, but it's not surprising. So by the end of the series, you're not in shock. Like, whoa, where did this all come from? You're shocked by the fact that she's with Chakotay, which really doesn't make any sense. It came out of nowhere. I disagree with the relationship. I think it was a really bad choice. But you're not surprised that she's dating. You're not surprised that she's a little bit more sociable. And you're not surprised that she's a little bit more caring. And you're not incredibly surprised by her bond with Naomi. It's cute and it's amazing, but you're not surprised by it. Damar, on the other hand, as a viewer, you're very surprised by where he started and where he ended. At least I was. I remember watching DS9 for the first time in the summer of 2006, at least the first time all the way through. I had seen a lot of it beforehand, but for some reason, it stands out in my mind that in the summer of 2006 was the first time that I had finished the series. And at that time, I was blown away by Damar and blown away by the character art. So I assume that most viewers at the time had the same reaction. But maybe I'm wrong. Maybe it wasn't as surprising as I think it was. I don't think I'm wrong. But if I am, let me know. I'd like to hear your thoughts on that. Before we close out of the episode, it is time for this week's edition of... Wait, what did you say? And the Technobabble this week comes from the TNG Season 6 episode, Rascals. And yes, that's the one where most of the cast turn into kids. Not a great episode, not something I would recommend that you watch unless you really are looking for something different in the sense that you've already seen most Star Trek episodes and you want Star Trek, but you want to be a little bit more engaged because it's different, then yeah, maybe watch that one. But generally, I'd say skip. But the episode does have one standout scene, and that's the scene where Riker has to show Morta how to use the computer. And then during that conversation, Riker goes on to explain that there is something called a bilateral kilolateral, and I'm hesitating because I don't quite know how to pronounce it. And then he asks Morta if he knows what that is. And then Morta responds, yes, of course I know what that is, 100% when clearly you know that Morta doesn't know what he's talking about. And... <laughs> The scene is hysterical. I laugh every time. And I had to go on to Memory Alpha to see if it was true or if it was just all made up. According to Memory Alpha, it is in fact gibberish. But with Star Trek, you really never know. So that's the pick for this week. But if there's some technobabble that you're very fond of and you think might be amusing for the show, let me know. But what do you think about Damar? Do you agree with me that Damar did have the greatest character arc in Star Trek? Or do you think that honor belongs to someone else? Let me know. I'd love to hear from you. Also, let me know what you like and what you don't like, what's working, what's not working, because ultimately, I want to make a show that you enjoy listening to. And in the paraphrased words of Captain Kirk, I shall see you out there. That away. <laughs>